to this week. Thank you. Tell me, how did you feel? What did you think uh, when your party signed up to joining a mostly Tory government? First of all, I was surprised because even though Nick Clegg had said that he was going to back the party with the biggest mandate, uh, although I'm a supporter of Lib Dems, I'm deeply cynical of most politicians, and I wasn't sure he was going to do it. And when he actually did, and they signed up, it felt, it, it felt very grown up. It feels like people are working together for, for the good of the country at a time of where we need a government to do that. And, so, and obviously, I'm delighted that the Lib Dems are, uh, have a place in this government and have like, a bit of power. Now, you said the coalition should be given a chance because yep. you add up the votes and over 60% of the yep. people voted for the two parties. But when you look at the latest polls, you must be a little bit worried that the voters aren't going to give the Lib Dems a chance. Yeah, I think the polls are a little worrying. I think they're very early uh, yeah, and it's just early. a couple of polls and I wouldn't go... I, to be honest, though, I think there's a much bigger game at stake here. I think really having... We need a strong government at this moment. And I think that the Lib Dems and Nick Clegg should be admired for their bravery and coming out and having to make compromises with, you know, not a natural ally, ally like mm -hmm. the Conservatives uh, at this time. So. Michael, the strains are becoming more apparent in the coalition already, though. I don't accept that. You don't? No. Everything I hear is that they're really enjoying working together. In a funny way, some politicians fall in love with paradox, and they're in love with the paradox of these different people who have been each other's opponents, finding out that they rather like each <coughs> other, that they have things in common, they can thrash up problems. Well, my, and I think Roy is absolutely right that the, the, it's the bigger game. I mean, for the Liberal Democrats, I mean, forget the 16% poll. Yeah, There's no election think... at the moment. For the Liberal Democrats, they have been out of power for nine decades. They have been unserious people for nine decades, and now suddenly they are serious people. They are participating in a government that is making the most difficult decisions that a government has made since 1940. Right. I understand that, but don't you need to distinguish between those who are in that government, the senior ministers, mm -hmm. and the Lib Dem voters, and the Lib Dem rank and file, the activists? No, I don't think you do have to distinguish very much, because what we know about politics is that it's all about leadership. I mean, you could have said at any time in Tony Blair's premiership that most of the Labour Party was against it, and they were, but he just led it. You could have said, uh, you could have said mm. the same about Margaret Thatcher at many times. You just have to grab it and lead it. And show leadership. And these people are grabbing it and leading it. The Labour tactic, Andy, is quite clear, which is to try and pick off the Lib Dems one by one, isn't it? Well, I think we need to test them where they're making decisions and supporting things that they campaigned against. And the VAT question is a very difficult one, I think. I mean, I respect uh, the film that Roy's made, and uh, he may well be right. I mean, th people may be are looking for a different kind of politics, and Labour shouldn't rush to, to just kind of, in a schoolboy kind of way, say this is all ridiculous. Well, maybe it does appeal to people, but I think the hard bit for the Lib Dems comes when they're standing with VAT posters and then they sign up and apparently have a, a huge change of, of heart you know that that it looks like they've sold principles for jobs and that, that, that is that's the hard uh, that's the hard thing and Michael's point just to finish the point it's the Lib Dems who aren't in the jobs Michael you know some of them are wandering around Parliament with their chins on the floor and stories I hear that councillors in the in the regions Lib Dem councillors are just down in the dumps, you know, they just don't know what to do, you know, they just feel so depressed by things. I mean, the point you make about VAT is entirely valid. I made it myself to Lib Dems in this very studio. Uh, but when you watch Harriet Harman at Prime Minister's Questions or other uh, Labour politicians appearing on Question Time and so on, the attacks are not on the Tories. It's, All the attacks mm. are on the Lib but Dems. Just, just let me to make a point, though. You know, Isn't Nick, that true? Nick Clegg um, was filmed in a meeting at Newsnight showed it, I think, a couple of weeks ago, in a meeting in his constituency just before polling day, saying you know, it's areas like this, Sheffield, that will feel the, the, Tory, uh, the Tory cuts immediately. They won't waste any time. And he was right. You know, Sheffield Forge Master. So how does he go back, I, to, I think, how does he go back to Sheffield, you know, Roy, and, like, with his head yeah. held high? Well, I mean, he he, he was also filmed in front of the big the billboard, which said the Tory tax VAT bombshell. But what we're looking at is a coalition government and I think within a coalition you have to make compromises and you know within that budget you had the VAT increases but you had some you know offerings to the Liberal Dems yeah. uh, you know I think you know 
like taking people out of income tax. Uh, but, you know, but, but the big transition is that when you were saying those things in opposition, you didn't dream for a minute that you would be in power. And that was the whole problem of the Liberal Democrats. Nobody took them seriously. Absolutely. They didn't take themselves seriously. The, what, the big difference is not that you're kind of influenced in the coalition. The big difference is that you're now participating in responsible decision making. And responsible decision making is very different from the idealism that you feel yeah. when you've no hope Absolutely. of having Absolutely. And I think if you think before when there was the there was the possibility of a hung parliament and it was going to be doomsday and the markets were going to crash and you know all hell was going to get let loose and it and didn't happen it didn't happen and the two governments came together uh, uh, the conservatives and the liberals came together in a very grown up way at a time when the country needed strong governance and i think you know it it yeah. worked it, you know it's just, just to well. come back on you though i understand that point you're making about a new kind of politics and that being yeah. appealing but on the other side of the scales there are 7 million lib dem voters saying I didn't vote for VAT, I didn't vote for cuts to jobs in the regions, you know. So on the other side of it, there's, that's doing a disservice to politics because well, no people no, would say that no, wasn't no my democratic, VAT. That democratic yeah. choice. And think. nobody voted for VAT and I can tell you someone interviewed all three parties because not one of the parties was honest about VAT. You all had the same formula which is, oh we have no plans to raise, raise <laughs> VAT, whereas we all knew that it was one of the major plans. The Tories, so, you know, are feeling quite happy that the Labour Party is attacking the Liberal Democrats because the Tories think that the result of that will be that you will drive the Liberal Democrats more and more into the Tory camp. And by the way, for the coalition to survive its five years, which I think it will, it's going to have to demonise the Labour government because to explain all the pain that we're going to go through, it, it has to build this narrative that it's all Gordon Brown's fault and those who served with him. And so I think it's going to be really difficult, yeah. whatever you do, for the Liberal Democrats to say in an even-handed way, right, we might go with Labour next time. I think okay. it's going to be I can see tricky. that, Michael, but it does just look to me as though maybe some part of the Tory strategy here is to pile immense pressure onto the Liberal Democrats. You know, they're in Parliament announcing the cuts. We have... Alexander the Axeman and then uh, not doing the loan to Sheffield Forge Masters when you know that's a very hard decision for Lib Dems uh, to support. It feels to me that huge amount of pressure is being placed on the Lib you're Dems You're the one's here. putting the pressure on, on the Lib, Lib well, Dems. I think the Tories are putting pressure on the Lib you're Dems. You're picking on, oh, I, on, I mean th th there is an attitude, the country in, and I think this is a danger for Labour being so negative and, and being so blatantly trying to cause a rift in the coalition six weeks into yeah. its life. The country may turn sour on this coalition once the cuts mm. come in. There's no question that's a possibility. But for the moment, they, there's a general mood that they want this to succeed. Absolutely. Well, I understand that. That's why I said that you know, Roy was making a very important point at the beginning. I understand that, uh, Andrew, but you must concede that amongst the 7 million people who voted Liberal Democrat on uh, the 6th of May, there was a good portion of those people saying, I didn't vote for the budget that we've just had delivered that will have a human cost of 1.3 million people's hopes and dreams. I mean, no, but there's a lot of people out there who will feel very let down by what they've seen, so they won't see this as a new politics. What, did, what they did vote for, and it was an absurd thought at the time, was for Liberal Democrats to be in government. Absolutely. And against all the odds. Yeah. They've got Liberal Democrats and, in and, government. And I mean, that must forward, be worth something, it, it, mustn't Absolutely. It? You're putting forward Liberal Democrat policies. Like, we've got a referendum now on, yeah. you know, on yeah. AV. And I think um, these sort of things, you know, you'd never... It you didn't think. The maturity of this relationship, and there's a, some Lib Dems are saying, we're going to vote against the increase in VAT, should yeah. they? I, I don't think at this stage of the game it's a good idea. I think... It'd be much better for them to show a unified front. This budget, you know, I'm not an economic, you know, I don't know whether I believe that this is the right way forward at the moment. And I think uh, that it's too, you know, it, they ha I think they should put, you know, you put forward a, a unified worried, though, front. It looks to many people that you've sold principles in return no, for, for jobs and for this no. referendum that you've... This referendum is above everything else, and that you I know, don't you, believe you've that at all. I prioritised believe... it above issues that are of more importance to voters than a referendum on we, 